life was done And I stood before God's Son It was time to see what my rewards would be With love He reviewed my life To count what was done for Christ For that it was would last
we were in a church in Lodi, New Jersey on our first Sunday here in America, and we sang, and uh, after we sang, the pastor got up to the pulpit, he looked at me, and he said, Brother Ronnie, your kids are very talented, and I believe they got it from their mom. I said, it's okay, preacher, but you cannot deny the fact that the looks came from me. <laughs> Have mercy, preacher. <laughs> well, my daughter put some of her song in CDs, and she's not selling them, but uh, she's asking for just a contribution. She brought some, and uh, the proceed of those CDs will go to the ministry he, she's going to do when she gets back to the Philippines for the preparation of her ministry. So she will share one song out of those uh, 10 songs she got on that city. And if you want one of it, just give her a contribution and you'll get one. Thank you very much, preacher. God bless you all. Morning, everyone. It's good to be back in this church. I always feel warmth in this church. Um, to God be all the glory. Um, this song I will sing is a song, one of the two songs that I composed that are included in the CD. And the title of the song is God is for me. I just composed this um, last summer, so I hope it will be a blessing to you. It is uh, based on a verse in Psalm 56. In verse 3, it says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. So I hope it will be a blessing to you. Sometimes I'm full of questions on the things I don't understand when life seems so hard and things get out of hand. I remember to call to the one who's in control as he gently reminds I am still.
to God be all the glory. Hey, hey, amen. <sighs> that show enough was good. Amen. I have been blessed and thankful for this dear family being with us this morning. Amen. amen. And I'm glad that the same God that, that saved my soul and uh, rescued me is the same God and the same Savior that is reaching people in the Philippines. Amen. Amen. It matters not where you are. It matters not where you're from. He can save anybody from the guttermost to the uttermost. Amen. And they have blessed me this morning. I'm glad he's real. How about you? Amen. Uh, how many of y'all know what it's like to got to know him and then get overwhelmed in getting to know him? And that's what I'm experiencing a little bit of this morning. So you're just going to have to bear with me. Uh, I like that. I do. I like that. And I appreciate this family. I'm thankful that the Lord has rescued the family. Um, I was speaking with Brother Tim Fleur the other day, pastors down in Florida, and he was talking to me about how that, you know, his boys, both of his boys is saved and called to preach and his daughter, and they all serve there in his church. And he said that's the greatest thing that the Lord has let him see. Brother Morales, what a blessing to witness your family. It blesses me. And uh, to have rescued you and to hear your testimony of what you come from, that's a real God. And I'm enjoying it. I'm going to try to preach from Philippians chapter 1. Grab your Bibles, Philippians chapter 1. And uh, I want to be a blessing to you. And I don't want to take long. I, I really, I just, I have a, a quick thought. I wanted to try to get a quick thought today. I know we've been in church a while already and heard much, but um, our labor is not in vain. And it's so amazing how the Lord puts things together and this dear family sang songs that are just so fitting for our message. But... Uh, I'd hate to get to heaven and there not be any faces. If you were listening to that song they sung about how that you're serving the Lord in lonely places. You don't feel like you're doing any good to only get to heaven and have Jesus show you all those that you got to influence. I'd hate to get there and there not be any faces. I'd hate to get there and know that I wasted my time. I want to try to help the church today. We're in Philippians chapter 1. Look at verse uh, 12. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12. If you're there, say amen. The Bible says, But I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen uh, out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Paul's referencing the suffering. Paul's referencing the hardships that came his way in his ministry. And he says that they, they came his way and, and fell to him uh, for the furtherance of the gospel so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident in my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So Paul said, the reputation of me suffering, having these bonds, being shackled, has spread abroad and it's given others some confidence in the Lord and removed their fear so that they might speak boldly the things of God. Verse 15, some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. In other words, some are using Paul's experience um, and allowing it to cause some strife, maybe some anger, maybe it's got them mad, and now they're using Paul's example to try to uh, use that agenda. And then there in verse uh, verse 17, but the other love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Paul says, what then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, 
Christ is preached. And I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Paul said, look, at the end of the day, if Christ is the one being preached, that's all that matters. And there's a lot of truth to that. Amen? Verse 19, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and my hope and in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness as always so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body whether it be my life or rather, rather it be by life or by death. For, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, he said. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you uh, all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. This morning I want to draw your attention to verse 21 where Paul makes a straightforward statement. For to me, he said, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now I'm going to be obviously trying to take the entire context of this passage. That's why I read so much. We must understand that Paul is writing to people in regards to the fact that his life has been in danger. He has suffered. He has lived to the point of death, as a matter of fact. And Paul here is dealing with a complex comprehension, first of all. We see this complex comprehension. Paul says, for to me to live is Christ... And then he says, but, and to die is gain. And so the first thing we recognize is that life, uh, the life here that Paul is living, uh, he says, is Christ. Well, uh, what we must understand is that uh, there's never been one person, listen to me, uh, ever come to know the Lord Jesus or ever uh, come to meet the Lord Jesus that experienced death from having done so. No, as a matter of fact, when you study your Bible, you'll find out real quick that every single man and boy and girl and lady that ever come in contact with the Lord Jesus uh, had an experience of life like they had never experienced before in their entire life prior. Amen. Uh, when you come in contact with the Lord Jesus, you find out what living really is. Amen. And you don't know what living really is today if you don't don't know the man Jesus Christ. We see here that Paul is recognizing that Christ is the cause of his life. He's the source of his life. Listen to me. Jesus paid the ultimate price so that Paul could live. Jesus was the propitiation and is now listen to me now, producing life in Paul. Amen. And that's what Paul wants us to understand there in verse 21 he said for to me to live is Christ this is his cause this is his continuing his sustaining his persevering his, his preservation uh, listen to me friend if you ever get in on the life that is Christ it's an eternal it's an everlasting life amen Amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Friend of mine, everlasting life is something you can't lose. Hey, everlasting life is something that you can't get without Him having given it to you. Listen to me. I'm talking about a life that supersedes and transcends anything this world has to offer and every single believer that's put their faith in him has 
gotten to experience this life. It's preserving. It'll last forever. Why? Because it's His life that's been imputed unto us. And the Bible called it, listen now, everlasting life. To me, He said, to live is Christ. He's talking about the source of His life, the sustaining of His life. The supply of his life. You'll never run out of life today if you've been given life by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been using this word a lot lately. I just like it. It's inexhaustible. Amen. It'll never run dry. It'll never run out, friend. Listen, we're talking about an immortal life that gives it, that has been given to those that believe. That's what, that's what Paul's talking about. He said, for me to live is Christ. It's sustaining. We have a, 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 a supply. We have sufficiency. And it's the subject of His life. It's the purpose. It's the center. He said, for me, for to me, to live is Christ. You know what that means? He's the reason I live. He's the purpose by which I am living. Many, many believers today cannot say that. Many lost, obviously. If you're here today and you've never met the man Jesus Christ, listen now, if you've never been born again, if God forbid if you drawed your last breath right now, you can't say without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven having put your faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. If that's you today, you cannot say to live is Christ. That is, a, that is a, an, exclusive, an exclusive statement to only them that believe. Amen. I mean, you can't say to live as Christ if you've never met Him. But sadly, there's many that have met Him. And they've got that testimony, that profession of salvation. They've confessed it. They've put their faith in Him. He has received them unto Himself. Hallelujah. But for whatever reason, they've let the affairs... The ideas, the priorities, the purposes, the, 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 the subjects of this world, listen to me now, to influence their whole existence. Their entirety of existence. Everything that they are is summed up in something the world has to offer. Paul said, everything that I am Everything that I do, everything that I'm a part of can be summed up in one word, Paul said. And that word is a name like there's never been named before. And the name is Jesus Christ. Glory be to an almighty God. Listen to me. There's nothing in this life worth living for outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know what brother, uh, brother Ronnie here he was immediately, you can imagine, he was immediately uh, uh, concerned, maybe wondering about how tall I am as soon as he seen me. You can imagine. We're from different parts of the world, ain't we, brother? They don't grow them like this over in the Philippines much, do they? <laughs> hey, man. He said, how tall are you, brother? I said, six, seven, six, eight. He said, did you play basketball? I said, I did. And you know what, brother Ronnie? I had many a people, good people, that loved me. I believe that that thought that basketball could be my purpose. That it could be my center, my subject. And I do like it. But let me just tell you, basketball never did nothing. <laughs> hey, never did nothing for me like what the Lord Jesus has done for me. <laughs> There ain't nothing in this life worth living for outside of Christ. You don't know what living is if you ain't living for Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, Brother Shirley, I want to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you got to get to know Him. And you got to commit yourself to Him. And nobody here today is going to doubt that Apostle Paul committed himself to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the life. He says life is Christ, but then he talks about death. Y'all listen to me. We don't like to think about death and we don't like to talk about it. But it's appointed unto man wants to die, the Bible says. Paul said to die is gain. What? Wait a minute. Gain, that's good. That means you're getting something. That's right. 
This is something that is, again, exclusive to believers only. You cannot say today, listen to me, friend. If you don't know Jesus, you cannot say to die is gain. Because it's not gain for you. If you've never been born again into the family of God, listen, if you've never received Him as your personal, eternal, and everlasting Savior, you cannot say to die is gain. You cannot. No, that is only for them that believe. As a matter of fact, listen to me. Hey, if you're here and you've never been saved, you've never received Jesus as your Savior and put your faith in His gospel, If you die, you're going to go to a real, literal place called hell. And it's an awful place. And you think dying's bad. How about dying for all eternity? In an eternal burning fire that will not be quenched. With torments, the Bible said. Plural, plural, more than one torment. We don't know what it all means. We just know this, that there ain't a bad experience on this side of heaven likened unto what's waiting on them that do not believe. Death, he said, is gain. This is exclusive to them that believe. And then we see not only the exclusivity of this death, but we see the exemption of this death to them that believe. Boy, hey, I'm thankful today for a place where I'll never have another trouble, and I'll never have another temptation, and I'll never have another trial. Listen to me. All of those things will be gone. I'll get to experience the goodness of God and the wonderful sweetness of heaven for all eternity. Friend of mine, it's a real literal place that our loved ones that's been saved has gone to, and they'll never, ever, not one time ever get to experience the suffering on this side of heaven anymore. Hey, no more storms, no more suffering, no more, listen, no more, no more problems. Listen, we're talking about a place, a literal place that Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. And listen to me, I'm talking about a place with mansions friend I'm talking about a place that you can't even imagine how wonderful it's going to be that's what death is to the believer oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory friend of mine boy it's a real place and I can't wait to get over there one day and see them that I've listen loved that's gone on before me and to see the Savior's face as the song said Listen, we can't even imagine how awesome it's going to be. We can't even fathom the goodness of this exemption and the entering of God's presence. Boy, I look forward to getting in on the presence of God. Amen. Hey, I've had some good times on this side of heaven. How about y'all? I've had some good times inside of God's house on this side of heaven where I thought, Lord, how could it get any better? Let me tell you, it's going to get better. Amen. Hallelujah, it's going to get better in the presence of God with God's perfection. It said we're going to have a glorified body. Again, that's talking about no more temptation. Let me tell you something else I can't wait for. Not to want sin ever again. I get so sick of me. Amen. I get so fed up of me and my sorry, no good for nothing flesh. That's exactly what my flesh is. It's sorry, it's good for nothing. God ain't never used my flesh to do anything good. Only by the Spirit that He's put in me has He been able to bring anything good to pass. The presence of God, the perfection, the place, the prize. Boy, I'm looking forward to a prize. Amen. And that prize is coming to me by the inheritance that Jesus has wrought. Amen. And the only reason we get anything when we get over there is because of Him, Christ. That's why Paul said... For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. To die is gain. I'm talking about this complex comprehension. Paul says, to die is gain. And look what he said in verse 22, I believe it was. Rather, verse 23, for I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart. What's he talking about depart? That's to die. Amen. Going to a better country. He said, I want to go to be with Christ. But you know what he says? He says, for it is far better. There in verse 23, which is far better. 
Child of God, what Paul is saying to us is he's saying, as compared to this place, that place is far better. There's not a bad quality about that place. Amen? It's a wonderful spot. It's an eternal spot. And we're going to get to be there for all... We'll get just to live as long as Jesus lives. Amen? (laughs) And that's that's what Paul's looking forward to. But let me help you with something. Just because that place is better as compared to this place don't mean we've got the first right to decide when we go. Sometimes in this life, it gets the best of us, doesn't it? Help me if you know what it's like for this life to get the best of us. I just don't want to be here anymore. I hate it. It's awful. Lord, I just want to go on home. Nobody here would care if I'm gone anyway. Sometimes I just thank God I'll just take care of it myself. That's the wrong way for a child of God to think. You say, but Brother Caleb, it's far better over there. That's right. But you want to know why Paul said it wasn't time for him to go? Because it wasn't about him. It's not about me. It's not about what's better for me. It's about what's better for others. Suicide's never the right choice. It's the most selfish choice you'll ever make. Why? Because you're making it for you. I don't know exactly why I'm saying this today. I don't even like the word suicide. I don't like that word. How many of y'all's with me? Huh? I don't even like to say it. But I believe it's needful right now. And I don't know why. I don't know what goes on between your ears. I got enough going on between mine. And I know this. We live in a world and we live in a day where they would love for us just to leave. So what Paul said, even though that place is far better, going there is not God's will for me. Whose who's right is it to make that decision, Brother Caleb? God's. And he'll make it in his time. And it's not easy all the time to trust him. Sometimes it happens earlier than we'd like, doesn't it? And sometimes it don't happen as early as we wish it would. But he knows, don't he? Paul said, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Some of us here can say neither of those statements. We see the complex comprehension and we see the concern for Christians. The reason that Paul said, I'm not just going to depart right now is because he was looking at his brothers and sisters there in verse 12. He talks about the furtherance of the gospel and how that he's excited about that and and how that's the purpose of why he's enduring what he's enduring. Paul's saying, listen, this side of heaven, I ain't doing nothing but suffering. Paul's saying, I'm in bonds. I'm I'm being abused and, and, and persecuted for what I believe. He said, and I'm doing it all. Why? So that the gospel might go further. So that some sinner might get to hear, glory to God, about the eternal truth that Jesus came and that He was died and that He was buried and that He resurrected the third day so that we might not die and go to hell, friend. That's what Paul said. He said, yeah, that place is far better, but I'm going to have to stay here so that the gospel will go further, and that's worth it to me, the furtherance of the gospel. What about the faith of uh, 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 through glory there? In verse 25 and 26, Paul talks about how that there's a furtherance of joy of faith and how that the rejoicing of his brothers and sisters uh, may be more abundant in Christ for me by, the, uh, by coming to you again. Paul's saying, listen to me. He's saying, I don't need to go over there right now because there's a whole lot farther for the gospel to get and there's a whole lot more faith to be expressed in God's people and I want to try to influence that for Christ. And then the fearlessness of the godly. There in verse 27, he talks about not being afraid and not being, uh, uh, or rather verse 28, not being terrified by the adversaries. Paul said, it's time for me to stay. So that my brothers may have boldness and not be afraid to say what's right. So that they might rejoice in faith and so that their faith might be stronger. And so that the gospel might go farther. In other words, you know what Paul's saying? He's saying, I'm supposed to be here. 
for other people. And that's the life of a Christian. It's selflessness. It's preferring others. Listen, hey, it's doing what we do so that somebody else might receive blessings for it. It's not so that our, our face is up for everybody to see. It's not so that our name's on the marquee. It's not so that on some Facebook page everybody says, oh, look at so-and-so, they're so good. It's not so that we're on the news about what we get to do for God. It's about those lonely days, God, hallelujah, where sometimes the world beats us down and we think we ain't doing no good. And guess what? The Lord just shows up and gives us a handful of purpose and lets us know there's a better country waiting on us. And yeah, sometimes this side of heaven, it gets hard. It gets humble. And sometimes this side of heaven, we have so many struggles. But if we'll just keep pressing on, the upward way, <laughs> it'll be worth it all. The labor's not in vain. God can use anybody for anything. Is He using you? <laughs> You know, I asked Brother Zach to put up a picture for me. I don't typically do stuff like this, but I thought it necessary. If I had a title today, it'd be fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. You know, Paul filled in the blanks and he said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But I'm wondering if all of us could say that. I'm afraid some of us for me to live is fortune. You've heard it said, there's nothing wrong with wanting to make a good living. And I say amen to that. But is that why you're living? Is our purpose to make a bunch of money? To, to pile up as big of, a, big of a pile of money as we can? For me to live is fortune. Let me tell you, if for you to live is fortune then to die is going to be famine. Some, they would say, for me, uh, for me to live is fame. I want as many people influenced by me and because of me as I can as long as I've got breath to breathe. I want to be known by as many people as I can possibly be known by. I want a platform. I want, I, want, I want people to see me on a screen. I want people to uh, uh, worship my existence because of who I am. I want to be famous. Some people, that's their whole existence. For them to live is fame. And if that's your reason to live today, then to die is going to be forgotten. How many men and how many women have lived with fame to have only been forgotten why because that's all you've got to look forward to if for you to live is fame if you're living for fame and if you're living for fortune you can take neither of which with you when you die did you hear what I said if that's your reason to live if, if that's your reason to go forward you can't take either one of them with you you're wasting your life and the Bible said it's but a vapor that appeareth for a moment and vanisheth away. For some, to live is fun. They're just wanting to have a good time. Want to have as much of a good time as they can possibly have. And listen, friend, if there's one thing I'm guilty of, it's trying to have too much of a good time too often of times. Amen. I like having fun. But is that our reason for living, I said? Are you here and are you living merely so that you can... Have a good time. It's all about whether or not you're having a good time. Years ago, my dad pastored a little church and there was a man that was serving there in the capacity of youth ministry and he was doing good, I mean thriving. And my dad went to him and he said, Brother, he said, I wanted to, I wanted to encourage you. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good work. These kids love you and it's a blessing. He said, Brother Tim, as long as it's fun, I'll still be here. My dad looked at him and he said, well, then you're not going to be here much longer. And guess what? He wasn't. Why? Because if to live is fun, 
than to die is fear. And the thought of death is constantly fear. Why? Because fun ain't going to take you. Fun ain't going to take care of you. Let me say this and I'm done. If this top blank is anything other than Christ, then this bottom blank will not be gain. It will only be loss if the top blank is anything other than Christ. Fill in the blanks. We need to fill in the blanks this morning. And they some in here that if they died right now, they'd bust hell wide open. Because the top blank ain't Christ. And they have no gain. And they, some of us here, that, that, listen to me, they know the Lord Jesus. But they've let other things creep into that top blank. Fill in the blanks this morning. What will it be? Let's stand to our feet. I appreciate the Lord this morning. Amen. And I appreciate the, the word of God. And I appreciate the, 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 the thought that God's laid on my heart. And it has is, it is seriously convicted me. Seriously convicted me. I appreciate Brother Ronnie making this statement. He said, the Lord saved me at a young age. He said, and I got right into the ministry he said, I don't have a specialty or a trade. He said, all I know how to do is serve the Lord Jesus. Boy, that's wonderful. Brother Ronnie here today would probably be so humbled not to want to make such a statement as this, but I believe we can look at the fruit of his life and say, for him to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. I appreciate that, man. That family right there is so sweet. And they're serving the Lord in a country that most of us will never see. And they're doing things for people. Listen, every day of their life is to serve somebody and reach somebody. And we're so consumed and concerned with fun and fortune and fame that at the end of the day, we can't say that to live is Christ. And boy, I, wanna, I want my dying words to say, for me to live was Christ and to die is gain. And I'm broken about the things that get my attention and captivate my mind over what's really important. And what's really important today is the Lord Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody's looking this way. I'm not going to come get you. I'm not going to make a scene. I'm merely going to pray for you. Maybe you're here. You'd say, Brother Shirley, I am not saved. I've never been born again. I've never put my faith in Jesus. If I died right now, I cannot say I'd go to heaven, Brother Caleb, because I'm lost. I'll never come get you or make a scene. I just want to pray for you. Is there anybody in here like that that would say, Brother Caleb, pray for me. I need to be saved. Nobody's looking. Everybody's heads bowed and eyes are closed. Is there anybody in here that would say, pray for me, Brother Caleb. I'm not saved. I'm lost and I'll go to hell if I die. Pray for me. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to know what hell's like, Brother Caleb. I want to go to heaven when I die. Pray for me. Is there anybody in here by the raising of your hand that would just say pray for me? Remember me, Brother Shirley. How about this? God bless that hand. God bless that hand. How about this? How many of you today would say, Brother Shirley, pray for me. I've let some other things creep into my life and I ain't been living for Jesus. God bless these hands. God bless these hands. If that's you, I won't, I won't make a scene. I won't say nothing to you. I'm just going to pray for the hands that's raised. I think it's good for us to be honest. Pray for me. I, I've let other things become the center of my life. God bless these hands. I need Jesus back in the center of my life. Is there anybody else like that today that say, pray for me, Brother Caleb? God bless these hands. God bless these hands. Well, I tell you what, we're having an invitation. We've got some already stepping out and coming down to the altar. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. If you're here and you're lost, I want you to go ahead and step out and come down to the altar. I'll have somebody take a Bible and show you what the Bible says. Salvation's available for anybody. And he gave us a book to show us how to get it, how to understand it. 
And if you'd like to be saved, go ahead and step out. You say, I got somebody in my way. I don't want to have to go through them. It'd be worth it, friend. Why don't you come down to the altar today and put your faith in Jesus? If you raise your hand and said that there's some other things that's become the center of your life, I charge you. Why don't you go ahead and step out? Come down to the altar and spend some time with Tim. Come on, Brother Connor. Sing. Sing right here. Here we go.